Well, hello, cowboys. This is John Wayne Cheeseburger speaking. In my previous life, my name was Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. By the way, comrades, do you know what makes Soviet cheeseburger so special? It's cheese. We only use organic cheese made from the milk of the male goats. So today we're going to talk some more about Trudovaya Knishka Kalhoznika, workbook of collective farm worker. By the way, I managed to find some photos of Nila. Um, she is the lady that we're talking about her workbook. Uh, this is her pictures in modern days. And of course, we're talking about her uh, in 60s when she started working as the milkmaid. That someone corrected me. That's how you call person that milks cows, milkmaid. And this is her portrait uh, when she was young. Uh, it was done by my uncle Misha, the artist. If you follow my channel, you should be familiar with his story. And this is Nila's house, uh, two room log cabin, no running water, no toilet. It's outhouse, of course. Uh, the only convenience she has is electricity. But before we dig again in Nila's workbook, I would like to tell you how uh, the average day of the Soviet milkmaid look like. Around 5 to 6 a.m., I'm not sure exact times, but super early, uh, she needed uh, to show up at her milk farm to start milking cows after milking her 10 or 20 cows i'm not sure i think the whole uh, herd in our village was close to 200 cows uh, so she would milk by hand in 60s and sometimes in 70s they switched to milking machines uh, then they uh, clean up the stalls uh, because it has a straw and of course manure they're gonna clean it up and cows go outside. And depending on the size of the herd, they may split it in two, maybe like a hundred cows or so in each herd. And there'll be older guys, uh, pastuhi, herd watchers, I'm not sure what the proper word in English. So they will uh, start moving cows out of the meadows and the fields where they're gonna just um, eat grass all day. So maybe around seven to 8 a.m. Uh, milkmaids are done. So they go back home and I, when I say going back home, they're not going to drive because no one had a car. There's no way they could afford it. Uh, so they walk home or ride bicycles the two, three miles they live. And then they have a free time till about one o'clock in the afternoon. And when I say free time, it doesn't mean they're going to just lay on the couch and watch TV. Most of them even didn't have TV. They need to take care of their own household. So they will be cooking. They're gonna milk their own cow. They need to feed the pigs, feed the chickens. And then they go out in the garden because every uh, collective farm worker had about one acre plot. And then start weeding, watering, and do whatever. Then shortly after noon, they walk back to the milk farm uh, where they load up this aluminum, we call them bidona, so these large aluminum jugs, milk jugs, they load them on a horse buggy and they ride it uh, where the herd is usually a herd will be by the river in our village so cows ate all this time now they're taking a break drinking water and that's when the milkmaids show up uh, to do early afternoon milking and of course over there by the river in the meadows there is no way you could use any milking machinery even in 70s so everything will be done by hand so you can imagine how strong those milkmaids' hands were. Uh, I would feel bad for their husbands because they could get in trouble because <laughs> all, all she can do is just grab it once and you get the message. Then they load up those aluminum jugs full of milk on the horse buggy and ride it back to the milk farm. And that's about a good mile, two miles ride. So it takes a while to get, to get back. After that, uh, they're done again till evening. They can go home again and continue taking care of their own um, animals. And once again, when the cows come home, literally around in the summer, you know, during the long summer days, it could be around 8 p.m. In the fall, it could be 6 p.m. They need to walk back to the milk farm, meet the cows uh, coming from the meadows. And once again, you milk all the cows. So the milk farm will be busy probably till like 10, 11 p.m. And the next day, exactly the same routine all over again, day after day. Cows don't know about weekends. Cows don't know about holidays. 
gotta go back to the milk farm every single day. According to what Neela told me when we were talking about her work experiences as a milkmaid, in 40, 40 years that she worked from 1951 till 1991, that's her milkmaid career pretty much, she didn't have a single vacation. She worked 40 years without taking a vacation. And my guess, she probably wouldn't mind to take vacation, but then who gonna milk cows? They definitely had shortage of people because from, I would say, 1960s, 70s, there was a huge exodus of young people from the villages, like my parents. Uh, they pretty much ran away from the villages, so older folks had to carry on and work without any vacation, any days off, because they, they just didn't have enough people and there was not enough mechanization in the Soviet collective farms. And if you work five days a week, four weeks a month, it comes to about 260 days a year, that's your work days. And when we later look at her workbook, she had 356 days, human days. So that's actual days she worked, not those calculated labor days. 355 days, 336 days, 322 days. So besides working without any vacation for 40 years, she worked herself to death every single year. Do you think Soviet milkmaids earned any overtime pay? Of course not. Maybe some bonuses in the end of the year, uh, which I'm not sure. But looking at a house that had no modern conveniences even in 1990s, still using outhouse, still going uh, for water into the well. I mean, for a person who worked that hard at so much for 40 years, um, there is nothing to show for. The only time when my relative uh, took a break was 1971. She worked only 135 days because she was pregnant. So she had decreat new output. So she had actually, uh, we call them pregnancy vacation. So that was the only year then she worked less than 300 days. So Neela's son was actually the same age as me. I was born in 1971 too. So when I came in the summer to spend my summer break in the village, we were actually friends for quite a while. And after he finished high school there in the village, his mom literally like pushed him out. She's like, you need to leave the village and move to, in this case, uh, Minsk, the capital of Belarus because there is no future in the village. Uh, all your buddies are just uh, hard drinkers. You're gonna end up uh, as alcoholic as them. So the, she forced him, he didn't wanna leave the village, but she made him to leave and he spent the rest of his life and still in Minsk, capital of Belarus. Uh, he is a driver of a trolley bus there. And you know what else is very, very sad? As I said, she retired in 1991 after Soviet, pretty much the same year than Soviet Union went kaput. And at present day, her pension is approximately $180 per month. $180 per month of the person who worked for 40 years milking cows without any vacation. And $180 a month in Ukraine right now, it's barely enough to scrape by. It's actually better than my mom's. A pension, my mom, like $100 a month. But, uh, you know, she has a son in America who can help her. In this case, uh, her son from Minsk is not much help, but she goes there every winter now, spends the winters because she's too old uh, to uh, survive winter in the village. All right, so this concludes part two, Life of the Soviet Milkmaid. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.
Hey, by the way, a cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet 